little warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the crypto warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Good morning, good morning, Big Square BigSquareRoadRoad.com It's your morning, Hornacy's your sip of chaga, chaga coffee Oh, my voice is finally recuperating from the show um, Amazing time whole bunch of people talking about freedom and liberty and changing the world to the way we want it to be, not the way they want it to be. Beautiful time. Amazing people. Road to Root of fans and people and participants are the best people in the world. That's all I got to say. You guys know what I'm talking about, that we're there. We expected 75 to 100. Got I We lost track at like 250. Great time. Thank you to Bar Vignetto out at, there in Phoenix, outside of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, they were very accommodating. <laughs> uh, Phoenix is, uh, has gone off the crazy mass thing already. The, the rest of the world is going off, well, not the world, at least in America, everybody's going off this crazy mass thing. And my God, bravo. Um, bravo, bravo, bravo. Get back to normal. Uh, they're allowing it because uh, Joe Biden supposedly is in office, so we'll see what happens. All right, let's. I, I've got all kinds of pictures to show the private road members and video and stuff. We'll be getting that out all this week and next week. Uh, join the private road today. Here's some pictures. There's uh, who we got in there: uh, Charlie, Jenny Moonstone, Mitch, Chris Marcus. Oh my God, there's so much to talk about with Chris. <laughs> while he while he was here, there's all kinds of things he's discovering about silver market rigging, the CFTC. I've been screaming for over what, maybe 20 years that the CFTC is not a regulator, but they run cover for the manipulators. He's finally getting the word out there and proving it by their own admissions, kind of like Ted Butler's showing market rigging by the own data that the CFT publishes. It is amazing. Bravo, Chris. He's exhausting to hang out with, though. Let me tell you, we had to take a couple of days off just because just because we hung out with Chris for a couple of days. <laughs> Amazing guy. There's Paige and Josh did a great job at the show. What else we got here? These are just the starting pictures. There I am singing. Uh, I don't even know how many times I sang "Go Day to Go." Bravo, bravo, bravo. There's Miss Jenny Moonstone was awesome up there on the mic, going live in front of the people. People love her to death. Chris Marcus telling everybody how silver is manipulated. Uh, there's me and Jenny in the crowd behind us. Such a great time. I'm. If I met you, God bless you. Thanks for coming out. I, there was so many people I was meeting. Um, but just, we, we are doing this more. We're going to go all throughout the summer. We'll be traveling around. Hopefully we'll get a big show going when the RV shows up, which is mid-July. But uh, right now... I can't tell you when we're going to be out there. We're going to kind of figure out what's going on between now and then, uh, where we stand as far as the market insanity. Let's just talk about the market insanity. See this price for silver, $27.20? That's a lie. Let that seek in. Every other commodity is hitting all-time highs, all-time highs, all-time highs. Even gold's hitting all-time highs. Everything else in the world is in hitting all tie highs when it comes to commodities because they're printing money like it's going out of style. They don't even tell you how much they print. That'll come out someday soon. All right, what's what's the debt is what twenty seven billion trillion or something like that. That's what they tell you. And then Catherine Austin Fitz finds another hundred trillion, and then Road Deruta says, "Hey, there's nothing stopping them from printing money and not telling you at all. The money is the problem, but the key to controlling the monetary system." Is controlling the gold and silver markets because they are the alternative. Cryptos, on the other hand, it's too too soon to control them 100%. They do massively control them. As Chris Giancarlo, the head of the CFT, told us, he's the guy. Him and Trump and Mnuchin got together when Bitcoin was ready to break out in 2017, and they decided to destroy the price. I hope everybody saw my videos back then. The same thing just happened with silver. The same thing happened to silver because Goldman Sachs was the massive short. Rustin Benham. Who the, this guy is like a cyborg. This is the he acting head of the CFTC. He's not even the head. He's the acting head. All he's doing is running cover. And here he shows us. He tells us 
that he's running cover for the big bullion banks who are rigging the price of silver. Listen to what this is Chris Marcus's channel. Go check out Arcadia Economics. The guy's brilliant. He's crazy, but he's brilliant when it comes to un uncovering these criminals that I've been screaming about for almost two decades now. Check out what Rustin Benham says. Today we will receive reports from CCP Risk Subcommittee co-chairs Alicia Crichton, Global Co-Head of Futures and Head of OTC and Prime Clearing Businesses at Goldman Sachs. At where? At Goldman Sachs? Could it be that Goldman Sachs was the short? was the naked short and went running to the CFTC said, stop, stop. This is the same guy that said, let's tamp down the markets. This is a regulator. Who is he taking his direction from? Let's keep listening. And also representing the Futures Industry Association. At where? Haley Betzel, Managing Director and Chief Risk Officer Benham? of the CME Group. Good job, Chris. I'm going to play a little well, bit. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcady Economics. And a quick update on the curious case of acting CFTC Commissioner Rostin Benham. Uh, you may have heard some of his comments in a recent appearance, uh, but let's play them again because despite not even able to getting the agency to confirm if they looked at the two rounds of evidence I sent, that actually explain how the price of silver fell 10% on possibly the greatest single day of silver demand in history. Um, perhaps this will explain a little bit more about what's actually been going on. The CFTC put out a, a public statement around the silver markets, and you're cl keeping a close eye on that. Can you follow up uh, on what the CFTC may be doing uh, in regards to this rise of retail participation, making sure that... Don't forget, don't forget, silver is one half of its all-time high from 1980. Silver is the only commodity out there who is not allowed to rise. And they're saying, oh my God, we can't let it rise even to, you know, 75% of its all-time high. That can't be allowed. This is just, this is criminal behavior. You know, these important vehicles that we talk about, futures and options, are, are, are accessible to the retail participants, but also with the proper risk disclosures and the proper, um, you know, oversight um, of those products. So give us some thoughts on how this phenomena is impacting the CFTC. Yeah, thanks, Walt. It's a it's a great question. Uh, it's something that I've been thinking about, and you know, the the events around the silver markets happened, you know, shortly after I took over. Uh, you know, I think in late January, and I think it's important to distinguish which was an equity space with what happened in in our markets in the future space, specifically yeah. with the uh, the silver contract. And in many respects, um, the resiliency and the market structure of uh, the futures market really were able to tamp down um, what could have been a much worse situation in the silver. Whoa. <laughs> so this guy's saying the <laughs> futures and options were able to tamp down. I don't care if it's natural or not natural. It's illegal for futures and options to tamp down price of anything. That's part of commodity law. It, Ted had talked about it for years, the price taker or price maker. The futures and options market are now making the price of silver. They're, the physical silver market is no longer alive. And this guy just admitted it. The futures and options market were able to stop this amazingly crazy idea that silver buyers should have a product that increases in price. Now let's talk, let's go back. The big, the big thing in this interview is right in the beginning. Listen the again. Co-chairs Alicia Crichton, global co-head of futures and head of OTC and prime clearing businesses at Goldman Sachs. Alicia Crichton, Alicia Crichton, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs. Remember the Reddit guys were supposedly attacking the silver market. Who was the big short back then? This is what he's talking about right here. Goldman Sachs. 15 million ounces short, house account, naked short, Goldman Sachs. Alicia Crichton from Goldman Sachs calls up the head of the CFTC, says, oh no, we're short. You got to stop these guys or we're going to go out of business. Because we were naked shorting the price, forcing the price down. Without Goldman Sachs, we'd have $50 silver today. And then they passed the short off, the remainder of the short, off to Bank of America. And Bank of America, yes, that 
Stallworth Bank. Bank Jenny laughs about the name. Isn't it ironic? Bank of America, Bank of America, Bank of America. Bank of America. 16, 8, 2,000 contracts. Goldman Sachs. These criminals need to go to jail. They shouldn't be talking. They shouldn't be participating in markets. If we give someone the right to print money out of thin air, which we do to banking industry, we give banks the right to print money out of thin air. They use that money to suppress the price of all kinds of assets to rig the market to make more money for them. Volumes are off the charts. Nobody talks about volumes. I think I'm the only guy in the world who talks about volumes. Why? I mean, this is what, 67, 77, say 80,000 times. That's 400 million ounces of electronic silver traded yesterday. Why? Why? And who? These are just these handful of banks that tell this guy, Rustin Benham, what to do. The head of the CFTC is told by a group of banksters what to do every day. We just saw it happen. You don't think I'm telling the truth? Check out the CFTC's, the, the, that entity that Alicia uh, Crichton was working for. Here it is. It's the Market Risk Advisory Committee. Well, I'm on the CFTC website. The Market Risk Advisory Committee advises the commission, basically tells the commission what to do and say. It's like a puppet. They have their hand up the back of the puppet. Every time they go like this, Rostin Benham moves his mouth. On matters relating to evolving market structures and movement of across clearinghouse exchanges, intermediaries, market makers, and end users, it examines systemic issues that threaten the stability of the derivative markets. The stability of the derivative, it's a $2 quadrillion market. How can it have any stability? $2 quadrillion of side bets for the banksters should have no stability. It makes, rec this is it. Listen to this. Now, this is like, I'm going to read you the banks involved. It examines systemic issues that threaten the stability of the derivative markets and other financial markets and makes, and makes recommendations on how to improve market structure and mitigate risk. It went to Ross, Goldman Sachs went to Ross and Benham and said, we're screwed. They're calling out our short position. We're going to go down. We're going to go under. We need to stop this. You need to tamp down the market. And he did it. And she's on this list. These are the members of this committee that advises Mr. Ross and Benham, the head of the CFTC. Look at the companies. <laughs> Stephen Berger of Citadel. You know Citadel, the, the GameStop short? He's on the advisory committee of the CFTC. Citigroup, one of the biggest criminal banks in, on planet Earth. On the advisory committee, HSBC, Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, has been a silver market rigger for 170 years since the Opium Wars. That's how deep this goes. BlackRock, are you kidding me? The owner of SLV is advising the CFTC. BlackRock, that's classic. The DTCC, the DTCC, Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation. Go to roadtoruda.com, look up DTCC. That's where all the criminality is held. That's why they can trade a half a billion ounces of silver every day and nobody, nobody questions it. None of those trades are cleared, as in no money's ever exchanged. It's just like the stock market. You think all the money is exchanged every day? No, it's not. High-frequency traders get away with whatever they want. LCH Group. There, oh my God, Virtu Financial. I was just going to say, Vinny Viola is probably in there. There he is. Virtu Financial. Vincent Viola. Used to be called EWT LLC. I called them out over a decade ago. Bernie Madoff's counterpart. They, they used to head... <laughs> they used to head these criminal organizations. Bernie got busted. Vincent Viola is still going out there. Virtu Financial, high-frequency trading firm. Why are they an authorized participant in SLV, a physical silver delivery mechanism? Do you want to know where the, 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 the guts of the market rigging happens? It's at Virtu Financial. And then the banks just take their position. Okay, I'm here for a while, Goldman Sachs. 
Okay, Bank of America, I'm here for a while. Okay, JP Morgan, I'm here for a while. Where's JP Morgan? I haven't seen him yet. Oh, look, there's JP Morgan. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Goldman Sachs. Wait, what was what was her name? Oh, she was the head of the subcommittee, huh? We're gonna have to find Alicia Crichton of <laughs> they just they sprinkle them all throughout. This is so insane. Let's look at subcommittee members. Oh my god, look at all these banksters who tell Rustin what to do. Counterparty risk governance. What was she under? BlackRock, J.P. Morgan. It is amazing. All these people are telling the CFTC what to do and how. This is how much control it takes. Look at this. This is insane. There's J.P. Morgan again and again and again. Interest rates benchmark reform. Oh, my God. It's... Look at, why do you think it's so hard to get rid of these assholes? They are so knee-deep in the rigging. This is what it takes to rig a market. That's just crazy. BlackRock, Barclays, these are, it's a who's who of criminals. More Goldman Sachs. Can't even find Alicia Crichton. But she's here, I guarantee you. They called her, what did they call her? You know, I've been asking myself, Arceus, that mystery hedge fund that blew up right around the time of uh, the, the silver attack happened. I wonder, because they were hiding all their accounts. They were hiding, the banks were hiding the risk of Arceus. Arceus, I think it was Jack Chinese. Remember, go back to what J.P. Morgan does. Look at J.P. Morgan is the most active of all the participants in the silver market, even though they're long. But the key to understand J.P. Morgan is that, look, their house account, they're barely doing anything. It's their customer account. Look at that. Every time, they, they they are the ones trading the silver back and forth. Ted Butler talks about it all the time. All the silver that goes in and out of the warehouses. And they're the custodian of SLV. I want to know how many encounters, how many different entities, how many shell entities J.P. Morgan has set up with Arceus as it related to silver. That might be a, hey, Chris Marcus, get on that. <laughs> He's running with everything these days. On fire. Anyway, so yes, silver market is rigged 100%. The good thing for you is you get to buy cheap silver still. Silver's not $800, $2,000, $5,000 an ounce yet. It will be, but you get to buy it cheap. But if you keep it in any exchange at all, and all you silver Reddit guys who are swapping from SLV to uh, the, the Sprott Fund, you know how much risk you have? Not that Eric Spratt's not a great guy. He is. And yeah, I do think he is putting this silver in his warehouse as opposed to what J.P. Morgan's doing. But you, your personal risk, <laughs> to get to that point, to get to the silver at Sprott, you got to go through your broker. You got to go through the DTCC. That's who owns that metal. You guys are completely missing the third-party risk. Completely missing it. You're supposed to be smart guys in silver. Go get your own physical silver. Don't invest in idiotic things like an ETF because it all goes through their system to get any access at all. It goes through their system. You got to go to your broker. You got, And you're not even taking certificates. That's the embarrassing thing. You own a share of SLV and you're not taking the certificate. Meaning it's like... Bitcoin Ben talks about it a lot. You go into Walmart, you get all your groceries, you're excited about your purchases, you go through checkout, you pay for it, and then you leave your grocery cart there. <laughs> I mean, if you have to, let's just say you have to go through the old system because you can't you can't get a safe big enough for all your silver. Okay, at least get the certificate so you you can say you 
kind of have ownership because otherwise the CFTC is going to laugh in your face. Look at the volumes traded on SLV and all the silver ETFs. They're massive. I love Eric Sprott. I think he's doing a great thing. But where's the nationalization of silver going to come? It's going to come in the ETFs. It's the easy. And it, anything held in Canada, that socialist country? Come on, guys. Wake up. Get your physical silver in your own possession. We're at the... <laughs> this is the end game. You should know that by now. All right. Moving on. Uh, Theta, waiting for that big run. We're waiting for that big run. We were delayed because of the NFT drop. Literally dropped. <laughs> but... The good thing is, as Mitch Liu says, we have a new drop tomorrow. They're going to try it again tomorrow. The Theta drop, basically it failed because there was too many people who were interested. It failed because of popularity. That's crazy. Now they should have their shit together tomorrow. Announcing W, the World Poker Tournament, Theta drop now scheduled for Thursday. Uh, 5.13. It's tomorrow. All users who pre-funded original 5.2 launch will receive 100 T fuel in the airdrop. I love T fuel, by the way. Theta and Theta fuel. I, there's a there's a few cryptos I love. I, there's one back just going through my head. How can we fix the silver problem? We have to shut down the comics, and they're not willing to do that. Obviously, they have tens of thousands of people employed to make sure that doesn't happen. There's one more way to do it. Implement peer-to-peer -peer trading so that they don't have these criminal banks swapping the short position. We don't have to worry about acting Chairman Rustin. Peer-to-peer -peer transactions, you don't even need a regulator. How do you do that? <laughs> you do what Reggie Middleton invented, Veritasium, peer-to-peer -peer transaction. Oh, did I tell you that Reggie Middleton got the patent for DeFi, Decentralized Finance in all of Asia? I'm sorry, anybody who's in the DeFi space, Reggie had that idea first, and he was smart enough to patent it. He patented it in the U.S., but they won't approve his patent yet. Yes, all the Veritasium tokens are still frozen at with that ridiculous CFTC debacle. They embarrass themselves. The regulators need to go, and I believe they will. So the only way moving forward is what Cliff High's data said. The CFTC implements Veritasium for all trades in all markets. Peer-to-peer -peer transactions. If they try to get away from Reggie Middleton being the inventor of that, it's kind of hard to do. We all know it. Yes, Reggie Middleton invented DeFi with Veritasium and patented it. Patent was approved in Asia. So he's got, you know, a third, two-thirds of the world. Do you have Veritasium? It's so hard to get. You try to buy a thousand dollars worth of Veritasium, you're going to move the price. Who's got all that 98 million Veritasium tokens? Nobody. They're frozen. Who owns them? Reggie Middleton. Who confiscated them? The SEC. Who's in charge of the SEC? Gary Gensler. Does he understand what cryptos are? Absolutely. He taught courses on cryptos at MIT. <clears throat> anyway, that's, I mean, I, a lot of people said, Bix, you're crazy. That'll never happen. I just tell everybody, don't go buy it. It's a lottery ticket. Just buy one. <laughs> it's a long shot. But if that long shot pays off, as in Cliff's data does, that has Veritasium going higher than Bitcoin. And if they force these assholes to use Veritasium in, in our exchanges so that they're free and fair and they save the monetary system without destroying it, then we all win, except the bankers go to jail, which would be great. All right. Check out the Jenny Moonstone readings. Jenny called it at this time. Now is the time. We will see it in the price of silver. We will see it in the price of uh, theta. Now is the time when both are going to move. You're lucky it hasn't happened yet. That's what I think. You're lucky it hasn't happened yet. Go check out all of Jenny Moonstone readings and join the Road to Ruta to get all the information. Well, I'll be putting up a lot of stuff in the days to come because now is the time for silver to run like a mofo and theta to run like a mofo and theta fuel to run like a mofo. So join the private road. You'll get one of these. 
silver Ruta coin. We gave away uh, a couple for um, Litecoin Lisa's charity, the Mighty Mia charity. We raised over $20,000 in the show for Mighty Mia. Bravo. Lisa is a hero on so many different levels. It was, it was an honor to hang out with her and argue with her at night. We love to argue together because we have our own opinions on what we think is going to happen. It's so fun. Um, and I'll be doing more of that all summer long, raising money for charities. Um, but Mighty Mia is our number one charity. And that's uh, a charity that like Queen Lisa started for her daughter, daughter Mia who passed away. Bravo. Bravo, Lisa. Bravo who everybody, to everybody who contributed to um, the over $20,000 that we raised. Clint Westwood was a man. I'm telling you right now, Clint Westwood is the man. And we'll be hanging out in the middle of his cornfield sometime this summer. So get ready for that. We'll make announcements on that. Anyway, if you join the private road, uh, you get a Road to Ruta coin and you get all the background information. The Silver Ruta coin is the only way you can get it. Unless you go to a show and you, you win a, uh, it's like a lottery. <laughs> and you contribute tons of money to the Mighty Mia charity. All right, this is Big Square. Road to Ruta .com. I'll talk to you later. All right, it's time to have a little fun with our friends on the comics. This song goes out to that big old gigantic naked short out there. You know who you are. It's kind of lonely at the top, ain't it? I thought I heard the people say, Pay me my silver now. Tomorrow's another trading day. But pay me my silver now. Watching the comics prices rise. Pay me my silver now. J.P. Morgan naked shows the highs Pay me my silver now Pay me, pay me Pay me my silver now Pay me or go to jail Pay me my silver now CFTC, you better shut it down Pay me my silver now There's people rising up in every town Pay me my silver now The got up boys are in the know Pay me my silver now Tinfoil hats at the silver show Pay me my silver now Pay me, pay me Pay me my silver now Pay me or go to jail Pay me my silver now But the nails you every time you try Pay me my silver now BPS shows how much you like Pay me my silver now The game is done when the silver's gone Pay me my silver now Comex metal in the warehouse none Pay me my silver now Pay me, pay me Pay me my silver now Pay me or go to jail Pay me my silver now Banking boys, melt that witch Pay me my silver now Deliver those bars and melt that bitch Pay me my silver now Pay me, pay me Pay me my silver now Pay me or go to jail Pay me my silver now Cause now is the time to free our land Pay me my silver now Silver in my pocket, paper in the can Pay me my silver now Pay me, pay me Pay me my silver now Pay me or go to jail Pay me my silver now Pay me, pay me Pay me my silver now Pay me or go to jail Pay me my silver now